is a second order operator. This is how we consider it. That A, the I repeat what we have seen already uh, in my lecture uh, yesterday. A is a function of omega t and x uh, with the measurability properties which are needed. And similarly for the B, uh, the B alpha when alpha equals 1 or 2 or and so on d means derivative in the direction of, of, of that uh, index I mean the, the, that coordinate with that index and when alpha is 0 that means the identity just in order to, to write it shortly the, uh, these operators and uh, the w is a D1 dimensional linear process. So I, I wrote here the, the coordinates up, uh, that, is, that we write it by rho. Then I, I write rho and rho here. And the summation convention is, is used. But uh, sometimes I will not write uh, the indices rho. Still, that means the same, so a, a summation there. OK, uh, let me remind you the, uh, the, the first thing, the existence and uniqueness theorem. So I have to repeat that. Uh, so let me uh, recall the assumptions for, for it. Maybe I will give a somewhat stronger assumption this time. So assumption one is that uh, the coefficients for each t and omega are differentiable in x, <coughs> m times, so we take m to be a fixed integer, no negative, and assume that m times continuously differentiable. in x. I should remind you that x is in the whole space, so we don't consider a uh, bounded domain situation. So the equation is considered on the whole space in x. In time, on a fixed uh, interval 0, capital T, and with an initial condition u0, which is, which is a function of x and omega. Right, and we and the, and these functions uh, with their derivatives up to order m are bounded. So let me write it uh, down. So with maybe the functions and their derivatives. <coughs> up to order m in magnitude they are bounded by a constant like as you see again by a constant c second now the initial I put together today the second and the third which we were last time so the three terms and the initial condition. And uh, I, I require this for uh, simplicity. U naught, the HM norm, so the WM norm here, squared expectation plus expectation integral FT m norm squared plus the g t m norm squared. For short notation, when I write g, then that means here I consider the whole vector and then in the I take the Euclidean norm and that is squared here, or just some of these when I when I write. The, the coordinates. 
right, this and dt, that this is bounded or bounded finite, and let me denote it now by script kt, and please uh, remind me again if I will abuse the notation and, and change as, as last time, but I would like to fix now the script t is, is full of the, the data. So this is the, the and uh, you see I, I think now that the expectation is finite. Last time I did not ask for that when I formulated the existence and uniqueness result. <coughs> and then, therefore, I used weights in time in order to make them. For simplicity, one could do that, and one can then uh, examine uh, time dependence, but so not consider also infinite time, but we would like to fix capital T, and so we require this condition now that this is finite. So this is a stronger one, slightly, or in fact, uh, in a sense, equivalent to the other one. And then the stochastic parabolicity condition, that is the A i alpha minus one half or minus one half B i uh, rho B j rho matrix. This is a the IJ entry of the matrix, so I consider this matrix, this is greater than lambda times the identity matrix, right? This is, uh, and that, that is uh, true for, we can, we can ask for every omega t and, and x, or we can ask that for all, uh, the same for almost every omega and t, for all x, this should be satisfied with a constant lambda, so strong parabolicity what I am using now. So lambda is a fixed constant. In fact, sorry, in my notes, it is kappa, so probably I will, I will use kappa not to. <coughs> so kappa, is that the kappa? No. This is something. <coughs> kappa, which is positive. And then the, the sorry? Oh, yes, thank you. Starting kappa. And then the theorem that if these conditions hold, then there exists a unique solution U. on this interval and moreover moreover u is continuous as a process with values in uh, hm so the wm2 space so with values in hm and it is in the in the I use now the notation of, of Professor Kulod <coughs> that H plus bold face H zero T, but then I write here M plus one, which means that M plus one derivatives in in X and integrability and here here two. I can also write two. So this means that expectation of the integral of u derivative up to order n plus one in x. Oh, sorry, why I am writing it so in a, such a complicated way? I'll just write n plus not much space, so just write u, t. Ah. I write the t as an index. At the beginning, I try to keep that. And then n plus 1 
squared dt is finite. So this is the <coughs> existence and uniqueness result we, uh, we are using. Now, our aim is to approximate the solution of this equation by replacing the derivatives in the equation with finite differences. So only uh, today only in x. So I consider finite differences only in x. So let us let us define these finite differences. So for so maybe here I also here that the delta I will use this notation delta h and uh, alpha uh, is a finite difference operator and it acts on functions <coughs> on, uh, on Rd uh, in this way that 1 over h phi x plus uh, h times the highest coordinate vector, the unit vector, so the basis vector in, in Rd, Rd, so we consider a standard basis or any basis we want, but minus phi of x if alpha equals the phi, which is from <coughs> 1, 2, and so on, d. And this is the identity identity, operate, identity operator when alpha equals zero. And this definition is for every H, which is a real number different from zero. So if I divide uh the type of V should be I five type. Thank you. So uh, this means that then instead of the, the operator, ah, not uh, the, that is important still how to write and the approximation for uh, for the operator L L H. So L so L or L T is is approximated by Lt and H uh, here uh, index, that this is the approximation for it, is uh, uh, now we use here the delta minus H and alpha, then A, oops, in fact beta, because I wrote it in that order, right? Beta, okay. <coughs> Uh, doesn't matter not the alpha beta and then delta h alpha and uh, so it depends on t I haven't written the dependence there but we know a sorry I don't keep my this now I start to write as an index so it's better if I don't write but we know that it depends on t so uh, the operator also depends on t and omega. And similarly, n h t is delta h alpha <coughs> b uh, alpha, so it has as in index rho, so then it has also ups, what I'm writing, not in this order, but delta and h alpha. Right, so this is uh, how we approximate, and then accordingly we consider the the equation. What is the state? Maybe here, the d u h equals l h u uh, h plus uh, the F D T plus M H U H plus G D W. 
that summation so low. Right, and then with the same initial condition, u not, u not a <coughs> is the same as u not. So this is the problem what we consider. Now naturally, this is considered on a grid, so correspondingly to the mesh size, h absolute value, where we consider a grid, so the grid is denoted by g and gh, that is h times the, the z d, the integers, so this means h times x1 and so on, h times r, usually I write as an upper index, x d, where x i are integers for each i. So this is our grid, so the, the standard, the simplest one, so we don't want to consider more complicated uh, grids for, for the presentation. <coughs> and then we can view this equation as an equation on the grid, yes? In that case, this is nothing else than a system of uh, stochastic differential equation labeled by the points of the grid. So let's say x, i. So when I consider at x, i, that will be one coordinate equation and so on. So it is an infinite system of uh, stochastic differential equations. So in practice, one doesn't solve infinite or solves, but one should um, truncate, so lo localize first. So that I will not consider in this lecture. That gives some error. We today do not consider that error. We just assume that we are able to solve the, the whole system precisely. And then we would like to know how well how accurately we can approximate by solving uh, this system of uh, SDEs, the solution at the grid points, right? The solution also can be considered at the grid point. But this is a good point. Can that solution really be considered at the grid points? If I am saying just that uh, the solution is a continuous HM value, M is, for example, zero, that means an L2 function, that is uh, no sense to consider that an L2 function restricted onto, onto a grid, so we have to, have to get something better. So this is why we play with the M here, with the index M, because if M is high, high enough, then, uh, then there is a, then the function, the solution, is continuous, or more precisely, it has a continuous modification, and that will be considered. So what we assume uh, further as a minimum assumption that M is higher than D half, yes, and in that case, we know that by several uh, embedding, There is a bounded operator for, oh, it's not good to denote it by i, because, okay, that's good, i embedding, but it is a, right, maybe still not good. It's a, a abuse, but I will keep it. So there's a way of embedding uh, operator is i from wm2, or hm, in other words, into the bounded, continuous functions. Yes, that uh, operator exists and, and bounded by Savoyev theorem. And in fact, then we consider, consider uh, u instead of u, but without uh, introducing another notation, the, the, the continuous version of it. Right? So this is a, a from now on, the solution. So we consider the continuous version. So what we can say is then, more precisely, that by several years embeddings, uh, there is a, there 
exist a stochastic <laughs> field u t t x which is continuous in t and x. So to be precise, a u bar, but we just keep the original notation, and this is, so maybe it is more precise if I put here u bar, such that for every t and omega, or for, or for almost, or, almost all omega and, and every t, the u bar tx equals the u tx for, all, for almost every x. That's according to, and then from now on, the, the, our notation for the u bar is the u, so we consider that continuous version, and that we can restrict onto the grid, and, and so, in other words, we consider the continuous solution of the, in t and x, which exists according to, to this theorem <coughs> plus the Savoyev embedding, and that we want to approximate by finite difference schemes. By the way, why do we know that we have continuity in both, in t and x? Because we know continuity in x for each t in, 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 by Savoyev embeddings, but we also know continuity uh, of the process with values in Hm, in T. And from these two facts, we have, well, we have the continuity in T and X. OK, so, uh, so let us see then the, the other equation. So the approximation, the, the finite difference scheme, the solvability of, of this one. So this is a, a, a system of, of uh, SDEs, uh, as we view it now. And in fact, a very simple one, a linear system of uh, SDEs. And it, under, under our conditions, it has a unique solution. <coughs> Uh, which is an L2 valued and continuous solution. Right? So when, sorry, to be precise, so maybe I should, I should make this remark <coughs> that if if F and G satisfy that on the grid, the expectation of the integral f uh, squared and the L2, L2 norm of the square of the L2 norm plus the g square L2 norm <coughs> et is finite. <coughs> this L2 norm means so where for a phi, which is given on the grid, the L2 norm is the discrete capital L2 norm. So that is uh, the sum of F x squared and A times H to the D, or I took H can be negative, though in, uh, today it will not play a role, but, but later we, we might play with that as well. Uh, over, over the grid is finite. So this is the norm, and yes, and uh, should be finite. So the restriction of F, which I use the same notation as F, it's L2 norm squared, should be integrable in time and expectation finite. So if this holds, uh, then uh, very simple. So the L2 version of the of Ito's 
theorem on existence and uniqueness, even for linear equation gives the existence and uniqueness, because uh, um, if you look at these operators as uh, operators on functions on the grid, then this, for each fixed h, it is a bounded linear operator, similarly here. So by the classical Nito theorem, the add to so even space version of it gives that there exists a unique L2 valued, so L2 continuous L2 valued solution. Now, um, we should notice that, in fact, that, um, that if we assume, as we assume, that m is greater than d half, then that is, uh, uh, then that is, uh, is the case. So f is in wm2, uh, also g. <coughs> Therefore, if m is greater than d half, then the restriction of them, but more precisely, it's uh, the continuous version we consider first and, uh, and restrict them, uh, these, uh, the continuous version, then that is in little l2. So why? So let us consider this simple landmark. If, um, so assume, that the that uh, the function phi is in wm2 so hm and that m is greater than d half then its continuous version is in l in l2 so in in, in other words it's uh, the then the L2 norm of its continuous version, so to be precise, then the uh, embedding operator I uh, and its L2 is less than or equal than a fixed constant times the M M norm, right, the WM norm. Okay, the the proof is a good exercise. So we we fix a, an x or, or okay, that is x from the grid, or in fact any x fixed. We we should then consider the phi or phi of x there, but. Uh, and then take absolute values, oops, sorry, uh, yeah. In the remark, the continuous, uh, mirror L2, uh, continuous in T. T. Continuous in T, right, continuous in T. <coughs> Thank you. Zero capital T. So this is the, uh, this is an absolute value is less than or equal than the Supremum uh, of phi <coughs> x plus uh, let's say h y absolute value y is in the unit ball around zero. So then as a x is fixed, so as a function of phi, or as a function of y, this is a wm2 function, so by Soboyev embedding, we know that the norm of, of this is less than or equal than a constant times the, uh, the norm of, maybe that is not, too, not nice to write, but phi, but uh, 
this is now a function of, of y, so this is psi of y. WM2. So uh, that means this is uh, n times and, and take the, uh, let us take the square and then the, the square, <coughs> square of this and then the integral of the, of a, um, RD Oops, not RD, sorry, over the unit ball. Uh, of the derivatives, d alpha of, um, of the phi at x plus h y. Uh, and the uh, squared dy but when we take the derivative then <coughs> in fact then the h to the alpha comes comes out yes in uh, when we take the derivative of psi in y we calculate it as taking the derivative first on phi and then inside so the h comes out uh, alpha length times and we should uh, also take the sum <coughs> over alpha length less than or equal equal to m. Now that we that we write that by integrating over uh, uh, by which we change variables so x plus hy is now z <coughs> so we integrate over z, in that case this equals n times h to the alpha length, but twice because there is a, sorry, twice because we split, we, there is a, uh, it is squared, so twice, and then integral, now by changing the variable, we have uh, the ball, the integration is over the ball of radius h centered and at x and, uh, and then the d alpha uh, phi at z d z <coughs> but then the dy so the dz equals h to the d or h absolute value here. Uh, let us uh, consider as h a positive for the moment. It doesn't play a role. So then h absolute value or write a, a h absolute value. So h to the d, so we have to divide by, uh, by d. So minus h we have to divide by h to the d so here we have this one okay and then uh, from here and when we calculate the 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 norm yes the l2 norm of phi then when we, sh we should take the sum over x in the grid <coughs> And uh, so these values, so there this is less than or equal, okay, <coughs> this is a phi x squared, and this is less than or equal than n times. So we multiply, sorry, important thing, multiply by h to the d. So then we get back, and then we have that in fact this is less than or equal than if we just sum h is bounded so for example by one so less than or equal than the uh, the sum of these integrals Uh, 
and uh, yes, and I lost also the summation here over over uh, over the alpha less than or equal to m. Sorry for that. So here there is a there is another summation. Now when we when we add these, then we cover. Uh, okay, cover or maybe we should have done it by. Uh, no, we cover all right. We cover and uh, with a fixed constant, then we can say that this is by another constant uh, less than or equal to this as the sum over indices, mat indices of lengths less than or equal uh, to m and uh, integral d alpha y z squared d z. So in other words, we got that uh, <coughs> wm2 norm uh, uh, here dominates uh, the norm. Here we took phi, let's say, uh, okay, we took uh, phi from as I explained from HM, the continuous version, so we, we proved this lemma. All right, so we can say that about the, the, this approximation is everything all right. We can view it uh, as a system of uh, <coughs> SDEs with, uh, and it has then a continuous in time L2 valued solution. And now the question, how well this solution approximates the, the solution of the uh, SPD. So our aim is, so I can get rid of this part. Oops. Yes, we are uh, including given the condition A2 there. So the, yes, uh, these conditions are given. Yes, uh, for initial data F and G, we are given A2. And uh, here, uh, you still impose the first condition for small L2 norms. Uh, where, where do I impose? In, in the lemma. No, in oh. the mark. The mark, you <laughs> impose the, the condition for... No, the, in, in this remark, yes. maybe I wasn't very methodic uh, uh, to explain, uh, I only started like this, that um, for a while I... Uh, yeah. So starting like this, that let us assume that this holds, but then later I show that in fact it holds if we again always consider the continuous versions, <coughs> and then we so this lemma ensures that we we have this condition satisfied, and therefore we have a continuous L2 valued. Uh, solution of the... So uh, you are saying that A2 implies the condition? Yes, exactly. Yes. Thank you. Yes. No. yes. Okay. Right, so our aim is... is to... <coughs> to consider the error of the approximation. So the, this means the supremum in time and the L2 norm of the difference. So UH minus U depends on T here, I don't try, L2 norm squared and also we are interested in the supremum. In fact, practi practically that is better to know uh, the, the difference at each uh, grid point. Right? So therefore also plus supremum U H and I, I use T here, x, here, squared. So this is the aim to 
estimate, so to know the accuracy uh, of this in terms of, of age. So then as a, a very simple strategy, which I mentioned in my first lecture, is that we take the difference, or in numerical analysis one would say, one considers the residuum. Uh, so one takes the difference of the, of the two, the u age and u, and this difference satisfies the, uh, the, the, the following simple equation as we have seen last time where the value time L H T U H minus U plus here an F H T V T plus M H T and uh, this is for us VH, VH plus GHT, DWT. So I don't write the, the rows, but you understand there are the, the, the upper indices, coordinates, and summation with respect to, to those. And, uh, and the initial, for, uh, initial condition for V is uh, is zero. So we consider this with, so F, what is F? H, so this, so the residuum is the L H minus L on U. And the G H is the M H minus M Oops. on on U. Well, so the 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 question how we do this equation. So this difference we view on the grid. Yes, so we can. the grid, so in other words, uh, here the V, or it's VH, as it is, a, it is a function of T and X, and X is from the grid. Now, we can do that, yes, we understood UH is considered on the grid, U is also considered on the grid because we uh, discussed that. Are, are you assuming that M is bigger than T over 2? Always? Sorry? Are, are you assuming that M is bigger than T over 2? Always? Yeah, yeah. So From now on, that is always, or uh, a little bit before already, not from now on, uh, it is assumed that greater than. OK, then we have the simple uh, method is that from this equation for VH we want to estimate the this one. So the main main thing is to to get uh, one the solution plus the estimate independent of H in terms of the of the free term now the capital F and the and the capital G. So it turns out, so one way is then to consider it on the grid, so this is the natural way, uh, everything considered on the grid, but it turns out that it has an advantage to consider this equation on the whole space instead of, on the, instead of considering on the grid. So that means starting with the, with the scheme, we can consider this scheme as, as an equation on the whole RT. So we now change the, the point of view and consider the equation, this one, on RD. 
right, so maybe I can get rid of the of this one. We remember these conditions. So just to now consider this, this equation. So this is equation, equation with index H. So consider this equation on RD instead of the green. Th. Now, what can we say in that case? Why we can consider because the the, the delta, so the the dif uh, finite differences, they, these are operators acting on functions on the whole space. So we can consider this equation uh, on the whole. Uh, these operators are are defined on functions defined on on every x. And now what about the solvability? So again, in that case, we consider the L2 space, but not the little L2, but, uh, but the capital L2 space. And then, the, by the same reason as, as, as in the case of little L2, this equation has a unique solution <coughs> because uh, G, F are in L2, L, H, M, H are bounded linear operators on functions, L, on L2 functions. So again, by Ito's, Ito's uh, theorem, but the L2 version, there exists a unique solution. Uh, of uh, which is a, 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 an L2 valued and L2 valued continuous process and I denote it again by U H or maybe in fact, we should be precise and not to abuse the notation because we don't know yet what is the relationship between this solution, this L2 solution, and the, the little L2 solution, which is the res restriction. So, in fact, to be precise, <coughs> that, is the, that is a U bar, but we will see later if there is a later still, yes, sometimes. But we will see that uh, that it has uh, because I should uh, continue further. Sorry, it. I wanted to finish that it has a continuous uh, variant, and then its restriction uh, is exactly the same L2 solution. This is not the little L2 solution. This is what we will see. But at this moment, first I say. That and because of the same reason, uh, this uh, because of uh, Ito theorem, this solution is also so. Maybe I continue here. Like moreover, <coughs> oops, moreover, that is a, moreover, this uh, U uh, H, let's say bar at the moment is a continuous WM2 or HM valued uh, process. So what I mean because of the same reason, because we can consider again the equation and notice that LH is a bounded linear operator for each H 
on Hm. The same about M. These are in the Wm spaces. So again, Barito's uh, uh, theorem with Hilbert space version of Ito theorem. There exists the unique solution. The, the initial condition is also in Hm. There exists a unique continuous Hm valued solution, right? But if that is Hm value, then it is also L2 valued. But then, <coughs> because uh, an L2 valued is unique, so the two are the same. So therefore, we have the extra condition. Ah. Well, if you fix X, if, I, if you fix X, then you can consider a shift kit grid, right? Shift kit grid. Yeah, yeah. Then you can have a console the equation for each. For each. One, one shift kit grid. Yeah, yeah. So two weeks, yes, you have the solutions. So we have identical in the same area. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. We, <coughs> the very beginning, in our A, we fix one, the, the, the key, the GH grid is fixed. Yes, there we do not move, that is fixed. And, and so we consider on that grid, and on that grid we want. But you are absolutely right that we can choose any shifted version of that and fix that there, but, uh, but just to have one fixed, we, we take the, the one which is denoted by, by GH. And, uh, and the aim is, as I have written down, that with respect to that grid to estimate the four with respect to any fixed grid, one could say here, to estimate the accuracy. Okay, so we then to, to, the, to considering uh, it as a, uh, as a solution which, which is HM valued, and then the basic, the main result is the following, so uh, so what we need is to to get an estimate for this, for the solution in little l2, but instead of that, we get an estimate in Wm2 for the solution. So therefore, the main theorem is this one, which, the, which gives the result, finally. That consider these types of of equations. Yes, so maybe I use my notation. Uh, U is not as good any anymore, but okay. I use V. Right, so let assumption one hold first and then let uh, F beta be some process in the H M H M two space T. This is uh, the notation of the previous lecture. You remember, and uh, and also let uh, G for each row be also in this. So I could have everything together. So this is not necessarily the previous one. We want to have a general um, result about solvability and estimates for these types of equation in HHM space. So we consider that type of equation. So I use D U H, sorry for that, but I don't have many letters somewhere in my mind. So this is uh, now nothing to do with the previous one, just which uh, solves the L H T U H plus. So this beta runs through 0, 1, and so on. And D. Uh, and here the delta minus h and beta f beta dt plus m h t u h 
plus uh, the g rho and then rho here as well. D top q rho t. So this is the equation. So in some initial condition, u h zero. And now we assume that that the a1 holds for well, these are this is the same as before so for the what is a1 it was here that is the about the regularity of the coefficients a and, and b that they have derivatives up to order m in x and continuous continuous in x for each t and almost every <coughs> omega and here what we assume that the f beta is is in this space and the g rho these are some functions in the, the same space and that this one satisfies also the, that condition uh, which is then what we claim that then first thing that there exists an L2 a unique L2 solution of this one but here uh, there exists a unique L2 valued continuous uh, in time in T solution and moreover we know that or we claim here I think that I told that already that it is a continuous uh, HM Valued. This is the, the the first thing, and then second. Assume also <coughs> also a three, which is the stochastic parabolicity, and then so then. Then we have the estimate, the following estimate. Supremum over time of UH, the solution in the WM to norm squared plus, I think, yeah, right, plus, so expectation plus the expectation supremum of integral, sorry. Should have known this from zero to, to t and the sum over alpha times less than or equal to m. Uh, oops, what, what I'm writing? Sorry. This alpha is our our index alpha, which is from zero to d. Uh, d or d h alpha of, uh, of u h t and the m norm square integrated so this uh, is less than or equal than a constant times the expectation of u naught square and norm plus the expectation of uh, the integral the f beta t 
m mod squared, that is a summation of the beta, uh, plus the g t m mod squared dt. Yes, that's it. Okay. Right, so <coughs> is that all right or, or not? Well, what's the difference between h bar, uh, u bar h and u? Yes, uh, I should be, should be precise. Yes, that this u h bar is our, our stuff from the previous. So what is related to the scheme? Now this theorem is an auxiliary theorem. For, for getting the result. <coughs> so here, uh, I'm sorry for this abuse of notation. This UH is nothing to do with the previous UH. This is just uh, a, a general equation of the same type, but having the same, uh, having the same operators, but with any, uh, any, Three terms and and uh, initial condition, and then this theorem is used for for the uh, for this uh, v. If you remember, we had we had the equation right. So the next step, I write back the equation for the u h minus. Uh, minus u, so this for this, which is the L H and V plus this F H V T plus the M H V T. This is the V T plus G H. We could residue that one gets here a free term, which you remember is uh, this one, is LH acting on the difference, or oh, oh, sorry, not LH, but the difference of L and LH acts on U, which should be a nice solution, right, which we know it is, and then this is our free term, and then in terms of the free terms, we have an estimate. And now, in this form, so is that uh, my that in this form is that I mean, the, your capital F, your capital F H uh, doesn't look like in this form. L minus R H over here. So this one yeah. you say is not exactly of that form. Yeah. Uh, no, in fact, uh, this is a more general form because the beta can be zero. So in fact, this is a little bit more general. And sorry for creating this extra difficulty for you that I wrote it in a more general uh, way. But this is how it is convenient to prove the, uh, this result if one writes it in, uh, which we will not see today, I am afraid, how to prove. So let's see. How, how then we can get from this, finally, the, what we want. So assume that this theorem we can prove. So I postpone proving it. This is OK. So suppose now that, that we have proved it. So maybe just to make it clear. So this theorem, which is, uh, let's say, the main theorem, but call it theorem 2, proof of theorem 2. is uh, uh, not omitted, but I will, I will do that uh, next time. And, uh, and let's see what follows from, uh, from, the, from this then. What we then get that our uh, to use it to, to this VT, so as a uh, consequence, hence, the, maybe 
shorter if I just uh, write here I, this consequence. So now maybe I continue here, not to write so much. So hence, what we got is that I should have written maybe V here and then so. Excuse me. In the definition of V T, you yeah, yeah. About the proof of theorem two. Yeah. Uh, the there is no proof, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> about the definition of V2, U T H uh, should be U bar H bar T. Yeah. 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 At the moment, you're uh, you're right. To be to be precise, it is it is U bar. Okay. To be precise, so maybe we we take take that for you. And uh, hence, so we have that this is for the V, for the, for the V, and, uh, and here, here what we, what we can then use is the capital F. As I told you, this one is a special case. Oh, <laughs> sorry. This one is a special case of the general one, right? And here we have the GH. Okay. Then uh, then let us. Let us uh, see how what, in fact, in our case, sorry, this is zero. So here we have the front. And then, oops, two minutes. What I claim is that the also claim that this integral F H two M T D T is less uh, expectation plus expectation <coughs> zero T G A T and, oh, sorry, 2M dt is less than or equal than a fixed constant M times the H square times the, the KT, and that also the proof is next time, if the time is over. Sorry that I'm so slow. Thank you very much.